Hey guys, how's it going? Happy holidays. I hope everybody's having a blast getting ready for Christmas. I'm so pumped. And I came up with a new project last week that I want to be able to show you. And I'm going to show you how to do it. And it's one of those things that's going to combine something that you're really passionate about, that you love and creating. And then let's combine that with something that we can give to someone as a gift or to write a card. So look at this. This is something that I created on Upo paper with our alcohol inks and used some of our Maker Studio stencils to be able to create the word grace. And I had the best time doing it. I wanted it to look like a flower explosion, kind of with petals, but also something that looked like abstract art. If you wanted to, you could frame this later, but how great is it to be able to attach it with just some double tape, um, double stick tape, on a card that you can write inside, put a photo of your family, update them, and then that way it's something that you can, one, enjoy the bragging rights from, but enjoy sending them to your friends, and especially if you were like me, I worked for hours on end creating these in all these different color variations and had the best time. So, I'm excited, are you ready? I'm gonna show you how I created this in my kitchen to be able to have it where you can turn around and create them too to be able to give to your friends. Mwah! I hope you enjoy this. All right, so I'm starting with my Upo paper and it's especially made for alcohol inks. And I've cut this to size, so you can do it a five by seven, you can, um, whatever size that you're thinking about for your small piece of artwork. And I'm laying in two lines of graphite. If you'll notice, I'm doing it at kind of at a 45 degree angle, much like would be marble or a stone. And I'm intersecting them, taking them down to the lower right hand corner of my paper. And because it's graphite, I'll just take my finger and kind of go over it because I want to smudge it. I don't want to be as hard. And it's always best to do any type of lines or design first before you start to go and apply your alcohol ink on top. So I'm going to be working with three different colors. I'm gonna apply black first. You wanna be careful not to do too much, but I'm just gonna put down uh, one drop of black. I'm gonna come in and add a green and then a blue. So I'm also gonna come back now and take my dryer. You can use a hair dryer for this. Don't get too close because um, as you start to apply heat, you'll notice that Upo paper will start to kind of um, shrivel up and we want to make sure to stay it, um, keep it far enough away that it doesn't start to um, allow the heat to really affect the paper. So I'm moving it by, back and forth fairly quickly um, because I'm just wanting the ink to set. You don't want to work with the ink um, while it's wet, it's best when you're going to be making flowers like this, which is what we're doing today, um, to let it be completely dry. So now I'm using two really fancy schmancy tools. I've got my straw, and then I've actually just put um, esophageal alcohol into the bottle. So you'll notice I'm going along the edge. I'll skip a little bit, and then I'm blowing, um, I'm blowing it out. So just drop it at the edge and then blow it and you'll start to kind of see that shape of that petal very naturally um, start to come out. But look how I'm, ne I'm leaving some negative space in between them. So that way I'll come back in and I'll create a different petal. So don't go right in a row, allow some negative space. It's You're gonna notice it's gonna make it a lot more interesting. The other thing is by layering colors on top of each other, um, on the same circle, it allows us to be able to start getting this blue and green and black where it's assimilating a type of flower. Now, what I'm doing, and you may be going, okay, Amy, I'm not familiar with the flower, this color. I'm wanting to create more suggestion that it's a flower, that it's petals. Um, with my personal decor, I go in more for monochromatics and a lot of blues and greens and topes and browns and blacks. And so I like creating art for myself that can feel more sculptural and abstract, not necessarily specifically a flower, but by all means, you can go in and create different colors. 
Now notice how I'll start to kind of push the, um, the alcohol. I'll lay it in and I'll go back into that petal that's already there to be able to push and it will start to create these lines and delineation of color to where it starts to take on more interest. I'm loving this. Aren't y'all loving the, just kind of the overall composition of this. Look how our green in that center is starting to just kind of pop out. Oh my gosh, I'm loving it. You'll notice too, as I started working on this, I started in the lower right hand corner and so I'm feeding it out from there. You don't wanna start in the center of your paper. It's best to start at the lower right or the lower left and work your way up compositionally. That way it will go into that negative space. So I'm just gonna take my dryer real quick, just kind of hit this and see what it is and how it's looking. Again, keep, the, uh, keep your hair dryer or your craft dryer far enough away from the Yupo paper because if it gets too close for too long of an amount of a time, it's gonna shrivel up. So I'll just kind of hit that a little bit and I'm, I'm looking at it to make sure that I am happy with the composition. I'll kind of see as far as how I'm gonna be able to turn it around, be able to lay it out. I love using these and I'm gonna show you one that I did. I like using them as a piece of art um, on a card. So now, look how I'm coming back through. I saw a little wet area and I'm blowing this and I'm, I'm liking to just kind of push that petal or that ink that I have wet again with my alcohol out to where I've got some darker colors. Now I'm just gonna come back into the very center and I'm just going to add my blue and my green. I'm just kind of always as I'm working on this, I'm assessing it. Now, you'll notice I am, I'm gonna hit this really quick. I, I just wanna make sure before I start to play with it too much and adding more color into the center of my flower, I'm gonna go in and hit it. That way get it to where it's completely matte. You'll notice as it dries down, it will go completely flat matte you won't have any sheen to it. It won't look wet. So that way I'm just gonna kind of come on the edge of that again, apply just one dot. You wanna be really careful. Just one little dot of the alcohol and then blow it. So this is adding a little bit more blue, which is what I was wanting. It was getting a little bit too gray. And you'll notice by coming back and adding that dot again over the one that we had fully kind of blown out, now we're starting to get these gradations of color and it's starting to have more depth. So see the, the blue kind of laying on top of that black? Oh my goodness, it's just fabulous. And if you'll notice, there are a lot of artists that will use this technique of creating petals and flowers and composition in it. That this truly, if this is something that you enjoy, this truly could be um, an art form for you. So. I'm just continuing to kind of go around with my um, my fancy straw. The other thing is you're, as you're blowing this and kind of pushing it into that negative space, make sure that you don't inhale from your straw and kind of take your time. You know, a lot of you know I have asthma, and so I just have to kind of pace myself as I lay in that alcohol and I'll push that color out. I'm constantly looking at my composition, how it feels, and then you can continue to layer um, the colors from the very um, apex of the flower. I would be careful not to probably add more than one or two additional drops in the center like that because it will start to look muddy. But I'm loving how this is looking. I love how just adding the blue and green again and not the black has kind of um, added a little pop of color on the top and that black is underneath creating those gray tones. So, so pretty. All right, so now I'm gonna use my gold metallic ink. You wanna shake this up because this actually has mica in it uh, with the ink, and I'm gonna put that just in the center. Be real careful, guys. A little bit of our gold alcohol ink goes a long, long way. Now, notice that I'm doing something different. I did not dry it. I put the gold in, and I am pushing it 
um, in instantly. I, I didn't dry it with my dryer. I'm pushing it because I'm wanting that metallic gold to be able to go into my other colors and kind of blend that will give me a little bit of shimmer. Um, a little bit goes a long, long way. And I love how that visually takes my eye to the center um, of my flower or my composition in the sense to where it's like my eye goes there, then it goes out to the darker points of the ink. Now I'm gonna set this um, very carefully again, not to get my dryer too close for too long. I'm just gonna kind of set it because it will allow me to be able to see the lines, the lightness, the shadows in, in my art here. And I'm, I'm so pleased. I'll just come back, dry it just a little bit more. Over, over all over. Now, the other thing that I start to look at as I start to dry it is I start to look at the negative space. Those of you that have not, maybe you're new to the art world and you're learning, there, there's a vernacular that goes along with this. There are words that we use and there's positive and negative a lot of times that we'll be talking about. So the positive is where, um, of course, our inks are, our paint, and our negative space, if we're not careful, can get really, really strong. So I wanna be able to come back in and soften this negative space. So you see my, my, my fun little messy plate that I am uh, working on. And I'm gonna put out just a little bit of my, my blue ink. And I'm gonna use my alcohol. It's really best to use a 91% alcohol. I'm making sure that it's fairly thin. I don't want it really strong. So you wanna have a lot of alcohol in relationship to your ink. Test it off just a little bit. Just wipe it on your, your, I'm working on craft paper. And look how I'm just very barely, it's like a wash. I'm coming in and I'm filling in this negative space in between my petals. And what that does is it softens it. It makes the transition area from those lines to this white paper not so strong. And it, it actually makes it feel like a piece of art. I love it, but the key here, it's very, very, very thin. It is just like a wash. You'll notice you don't even see the size of my brush. You don't see the tool that I'm using, and it's so gradated, you don't even see um, kind of where I'm stopping and starting because a little bit can go um, a very long way, and it's a situation to where I'm wanting it to almost feel like watercolor, and you can get that look um, when you're working with alcohol inks, which is one of my favorite forms um, of paint. So I'm, I'm working my way around. I'll just kind of continue to move um, my card around as I'm, as I'm doing it. And I'll start to kind of pull in to some of my petals and soften it to where there's not a transition area. I'll just kind of, because I do have just a tiny bit of alcohol on my brush, I'll just kind of go in and pull that into that negative space so it's softer. Love, love, love. Yes. I could totally see floating this in a little acrylic frame as a piece of art. You could do um, maybe three of them. You could do a series of them together. Another thing I love doing um, is just being able to trim them up and make them into cards. So now I'm taking my artist brush and I'm loading it up with alcohol, no ink. I've just grabbed my little gold container and I'm hitting my brush against it, tapping it to where what's happening, it's slinging, it's a fancy English term, it's slinging or spattering the alcohol um, with the ink and it's causing it to reticulate. So let me show you a close up. Can you look at that? Look at that, yummy, yummy, yummy. So these beautiful little circles or reticulations are being caused by me flecking that wet brush that I've loaded up with the alcohol into my flower. I'm gonna do just a little bit more to be able to open it up. The more alcohol you have, the larger the droplet is going to be, so it's gonna make a larger circle. You wanna be careful, this is very strategic, and if you, if you overdo it, um, you're not gonna be happy. So now I'm gonna take just a little bit of my black ink. Um, I'm gonna add some alcohol to it and I'm gonna thin it down. And so basically with my artist brush, I can come in, I'm just testing it here, 
to be able to see what my strokes will look like. And I can come in and kind of add some lines, some details that where I see I've got some larger areas that maybe really kind of needs a little bit more definition. And so again, my flower, if you're, as you see, as, as I'm working here, I've turned it around. My intent is to go from uh, lower left to the upper right. So I'm working at it from the side and I'm just kind of trying to lay in a little bit of gray by mixing with my black and my alcohol to be able to give it some composition of the direction that I'm wanting my piece of art to go into. And this, again, it's art, but it's it's a simulation of a flower. But I, I like working with the blue and the green and the black. So after I've laid those in, I can kind of come back with a little bit of alcohol. I'm just gonna do one drop and now I'm blowing it out. So what does that do? It softens it, it's layering it again. It's gonna be very, very subtle because there's not a whole lot of um, ink that I lay down. And I'm just pulling out a few more petals. There again, this is my third application um, of a dot, um, not including my gold, that's allowing me to get this layered effect that just adds that much more interest. This is going to open up a whole new world of those of you who have never worked with alcohol inks. And maybe you've thought, well, Amy, I'm not really artistic. I can't do artwork. I'm going to, I'm going to argue with you because that's why I get on here and I want to teach you skills. I want to teach you how to be able to create something that I feel like you're going to um, love creating. So now it's your turn, guys.